trip to hell. Philip Montofa is a pastor in Mawur Sharon Church, Surabaya, Indonesia since 1998. January 1, 2000, 5 a.m. in the morning, I arrived in what was like a large desert, dry and infertile. The wind was so heavy and the weather was so hot. I saw a lot of weird and disgusting animals that I've never seen before in my life. I walked step by step through the desert until I found myself in a gloomy place. I had strange feelings that time and I could feel the pain spread to all of my bones. The situation was silent and dark. No wind blew. A dark cloud appeared and surrounded that place. I could not describe it in better words. A huge gate appeared in front of me. I felt nervous and worried but I tried to open that gate anxiously. It was not difficult to open it. I opened it and was shocked because there was another gate bigger than the first one. It was written on top of that gate, Valley of Torture. There was a doubt in my heart implicitly, whether I should continue this trip or not. But something so powerful inside of me made me go on. My heartbeat was loud as I could hear it myself while I opened the next gate and oh my god. I could not believe, I could not believe what I saw but it was real. There was a long dark path in front of me. I stood in the side of the gate watching and predicting how large and long that path was but I could not see it clearly. I saw a flame rise up at the end of that path. I thought it was a terrible ocean of fire. Along the way I walked in that dark path, I saw many people were tortured by creatures wearing black clothes and having horns in their heads. I saw they were so cruel in torturing everyone there before they were put into the fire ocean at the end of the path. I heard affecting tears and pain mixed up with dirty laugh sounds in that dirty place. At the edge of the path, there was a young woman whose hands were bound at a piece of wood and she was surrounded by a lot of horned creatures who made fun of her and laugh at her. I saw her face was pale and white filled with fear. A strange weapon that I have never seen before was swinging in front of her face. I did not know exactly what it was but it was like a fork with a sharp cutting edge in the top of it. That weapon was carried by one of the horned devils which surrounded that woman. I heard the devils were threatening that poor frightened woman, lie. Come on, lie. I saw her become more frightened. She completely fell into the power of the horned devils so that she obeyed them whatever they wanted. That woman answered, yes, yes, I lied. I lied. All of the devils were laughing, seems that they were satisfied with the young woman's answer. I thought after that woman did everything that they wanted, they would have released her. But what happened next really shocked me. The devil stabbed that horrible thing into her face. The fresh blood squirted from her face. It was so horrifying. Her face did not have a shape anymore and her cry of pain was so heartbreaking. Stop. Stop it. I yelled. But strangely, they could not hear my voice. Even more, my appearance seemed invisible to them. I felt disgusted for everything that I saw, but there were a lot of other views that surprised me and made me shocked. Then, I saw a man whose hair was burnt, only rotten skull remained. There were unburnable maggots coming out of his skull cavity. He was lying and carrying from the end of the path not far from the fire, I thought that they tortured him for a long time. His body was burning and his flesh was melting because he was lying near the hottest fire ever. The devils who carried him were laughing at him. There was nothing he could do besides surrender himself to them. He was dying but he could not die. He looked like having terrible pain, seemed he wanted to say something for mercy. One of those devils said, come on, masturbate, masturbate. That man while shaking answered, yes, I masturbate, I masturbate, ah. He was screaming and a lot of maggots came out from all of his body so many. I felt disgusted when I saw them, even when I heard his screaming it was so horrible. There was more screaming and commanding that I heard. Come on, drink, drink, gambling, deceive. And those devils were laughing and enjoying the moaning of pain and tears, as they were listening to wonderful music. I was afraid to walk in through that path. I only saw as far as I could and I was sure there was more kind of tortures at that place which is more appropriate to be called barracks of torture. I found a view that made me really shocked, there were many righteous and religious people there. I did not believe it but I did not have the power to deny all that I saw. I heard all their screaming when they were being tortured. They cried out for God, God, help me. God, was I not always together with you? You taught us in our towns and I served you Lord. They were begging to God but salvation had already been closed for them, till I heard they abused him. My heart was breaking when I saw it. 
After that, I was at the top of the horrible situation I could not continue that journey anymore. And I believed if I continued this journey, I would have been dead. God, I cried please bring me out from here. Please, God. All of these were a vision, a horrible vision, a vision of hell. I was so happy when I found out that I was at home, even though after that I got ill for a couple of days. All of my bones and pivots were hurt, I suffered stomach disorder and got shocked day by day. I prayed to God and wondered what it's all about, what he wants through my experience. God gave me an understanding and a deep burden for the people around me. God wants me to tell you what happened and will be happened to everyone living in sin. A lot of them are having fun, eating, drinking, having a party, free sex, drugs, and others and it seems to them that they can enjoy them forever. They do not realize that hell and the horned devils are waiting for them. They are the next victims. I know that God really loves you. This vision that was shown to me is proof that he's still giving you a chance to repent. Trip to Hell Philip Montofa